Hello there, and welcome back. Tomorrow, let's play Shadowrun Dragonfall. Last episode, I was kind of given my... Well, it's basically, let's be honest, a kind of a shit job, you know what I mean? Gotta go around activating these, uh... Hey! Hello. What's that? Dancer's bag. Better not fuck with it. I'm not an ass. So we gotta go around activating these uh, data taps. And there's three of them. Three to activate. Looking for some magic, mind fruin? What do you got? Uh, the Romani. Romani is just a fucking pussy's word for fucking gypsy. He's a fucking gypsy, okay? Uh, uh, I have cash. I need some weapons. Show me the goods. Uh, you have outfits? Secure tech armored clothing. Uh, yes? I think it's better than what I have, so. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Yep. Looks kind of strange, but hey. What are you gonna do, right? Gotta be protected. So, this is a pretty big area. Here's the. Uh, here's another data tap there. Alright. Now. Where's the, uh, the last one? I guess it's not anywhere that way. What do you got? Warming yourself in the dim light uh, of a dying street lamp is a waif of a girl who looks far too worn for her years. The mother superiors. She says there will be seven for me to care for. I need to see them. Seven what? What do we have to care for? The captain's children. The mother superior says there are seven. She says I'm to be governess to the children. You notice a chip jack uh, poking out beneath the young woman's unruly hair. The vacant look in her eyes marks uh, her as a likely BTL junkie. Lost between reality and any number of better-than-life virtual constructs. The story sounds familiar. Captain Von uh, Trapp is very well known and respected. The poor dear who lost his wife and the children, their mother. A child should not be without a mother, and a mother should not be without a child. Have you seen the captain? Do you know Monica? Monica? she one of the sisters at the Abbey? No, wait, Monica. A flicker of recognition fights through the haze in the young woman's eyes. Yes, Monica, she's good to me. Brings me food to eat and tea to drink. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Despite the woman's persistent delirium, she seems to glean meaningly, uh, meaning from your tone. She died? I'm sorry she did. The girl grips her head with a claw, with claw-like hands, tugging at her hair, as if she might pull her brain out through her skull. I don't like this, but I can't switch it off. The girl's frail body shudders, and her eyes grow large, but she does not sob. Instead, she smiles, a sad smile, which looks to have been worn all too often. She will go to heaven, she told me. It's a place for good people, stillborn babies and childhood pets. She was a good person. The girl then begins to mumble to herself, while fingering the hair that covers the jack in her head. I'm gonna step away now. Well, that's kind of sad, I guess. Phone rings. And as you are uh, 
Resetting the data tab, you notice that someone has duct taped a small amount, a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. Put the earplug in the air. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find you can make out two distinct voices. A nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, breathy tone. Uh, just heard. Monica. Need to verify. Good for us. They sound like a conveyor belt. Uh, starting adds to the noise of machinery, and you can't make out anything else until it comes to a stop a minute later. I uh, think our next step... Wait, isn't ready to move yet, to be patient. See who steps up, could be someone more. We can very about start up, all you can hear is the sound of machinery. Remember when vehicle start up, trying out anything else, keep listening, fuck it. A bell rings loudly and again and again, it sounds like their telephone. You hear the sound of a door slamming shut. The noise of the machine, machinery is suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic and the ring stops. The nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. Good talk, I may help you. Your tone changes, becomes more businesslike. I heard. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. What do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet again. I know. Getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the crazy bazaar was only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. You hear the sound of the door opening again, and the, uh, cacote? Cacophony, cacophony, of fucking hell, uh, of machinery fills the line. You can't make out anything more. All right. Let's take a look at this phone because I'm a busybody. It's an old obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. A monotone pitch adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. Uh, the shock villain writer. Uh, his contact uh, for this keys is no more. Daniel is listed as a follow-up contact. This is our only secured line to the keys. Or keys. Please listen to the following instruction carefully. If you are a supporter of our cause, who are these people? Uh, the shock villain Greta is fighting for freedom and liberty of information in Berlin. The F state manages many things, but information remains controlled. Corporations keep any information they can under lock and key. Silencing dissent, silencing indiscretions, silencing truth. My goal is to liberate this information so that any who wish to may access it, and so that the F state can regulate itself based on truth. We're simply a collective of like-minded individuals working toward this cause. We have phone booths at strategic locations throughout the city. With each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. Okay, so basically, uh, I'll keep an eye out. Uh, that sounds like uh, getting into the Matrix and shit. Uh, I'm a street samurai, and it's uh, not sounding like something that uh, I can do. So let's get back to uh, this Turkish guy. It's a safe house. It's the lady that sells, uh, I think, cyberware, I think she sells. Hey guy, Altug, that's his name. Altug smiles at you from behind the corner. Welcome back. How may I serve you? I finished with your little trifle. 
Ah, very good. I assumed you had no difficulties. Difficulties? No. One of the taps had been modified a bit, though. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. He laughs. Of course they were. I would be surprised if they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. We do not spy. How will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you are, if you are to stay here, uh, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath will sweat, as my uncle Tatum always says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on a tap and heard something might be important. His eyes closely, uh, he eyes you closely amused. Oh, tell me, a listener at keyholes, what did you hear on the surveillance tap you found? Couldn't make out much, a nasal woman and a high-pitched man. They seemed pleased, and Monica was out of the picture. Turk's face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. These two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide if they could make a move. Uh, then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. He nods grimly. Most excellent. It is indeed uh, fortuitous that you have discovered this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. Very interested in this, so let me know what happens. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. He barks a stream of rapid fire Turkish, and the gum chewing young woman comes hurrying out of the counter. Uh, the menu for Air Amsel, Uncle. Uh, Cammy hands you a full piece of paper. Inside is a memory stick. Please extend my consolations to him. The death of uh, Fraulein Schaefer must have hit him hard. Uh, Burakazi gives Kami a small nod, and he she hurries out of the room. When she is gone, he returns his attention to you. Please expect my, express my condolences as well. I only heard the news. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. He frowns. If you know how important. The memory stick Kami just handed to you should contain all the information her Amsel requires from our chef in the field. Uh, should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. Looks like night, so I'm not sure about good day. But hey, you know, what do you want? Alright, let's get back to the safe house and uh, give Amsel this information. Whatever his name is. Looks like an M to me. Everybody's gathered. What's going on here? Daniel, arm still seemed, uh, peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get the information about Green Winters? Yes, I spoke to Alto. He gave me this memory stick. Let's see what his agent has to say. Amsel snatches the memory stick from your hand and slots it into this into his computer terminal. He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mounting the words as his uh, mouthing the words as his eyes flit back and forth. Burakazi's agent tailed uh, Green Winters to a hotel in a cesspool of a, ca a keys called. Uh, Droken Kippa. Uh, this hotel is called Das Kessel House. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Droken, Droken Kippa. It appears that Winters is holed up there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs that were control of this neighborhood due to the gang violence. The agent refused to follow Winters inside of the hotel, but he confirms that he is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Tiger slings her rifle over her shoulder with a single uh, spare motion. Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Laurie and Dietrich pause, exchange looks with Paul. Just a moment, Iger. Amsel uh, rises from his chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eye. You're an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your confidence in the field, and your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe Daniel is the right choice to lead the team. There's a long pause, pause before Iger speaks. When she does, 
her <laughs> voice comes out dull and flat. What? Don't mistake this decision for a reprimand. Monica considered your contributions to the team to be invaluable. But we all know she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Iger speaks th uh, through clenched teeth. Her words are measured. Her expression is livid. This is unbelievable. You want to put a rookie in charge? Again? She shakes her head. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? That was the reason why uh, we're still alive, Iger. He kept us together. He led us out of there in one piece. Making him your golden boy. She sounds tired, resigned, but above all disappointed. There's more of your flux state idiocy at work, isn't it? The chick reaches out, puts his hand on her shoulder. It's what Monica believed in. Iger's voice tightens. For a moment, her control slips and her face con uh, contorts in grief. Yeah. And look where that got her. She straightens uh, to her full height. Uh, let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and survival. Everything else is a distraction. The ridiculous politics have no place on a shadow run. Dietrich manages the smile. What can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. Iger sighs. The tone of resignation returns to her voice. Screw it. Let's put an end to this. They've got the skill and experience to lead this team. Denel, on the other hand, was appointed by Monica as a joke. I'd rather he take the lead. I'll abide by that. But I want to hear uh, each of you say it. I have no quarrel with the Iger. I'll do as the group wishes. You stay out of this. She stabs an armored finger in your chest hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and he lets out a low growl. Reflexively, she takes a half step back. I think we've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Dan will save our lives back there. You may not believe it, but he did. The way I see it, that means I follow his lead uh, a while longer. Gore's voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trusted Monica's judgment, therefore I trust in Daniel's judgment. The discussion is finished, Iger. Hams will speak softly, but his tone is firm. Daniel will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. I'll do whatever it takes to keep this team uh, and Monica's legacy alive. That includes taking your advice, Iger. Iger gives you a small nod. That's big of you. She looks from Dietrich to Glory to Amsil, finally down to Dante, and then she sighs. I don't agree with the decision, but I will respect it. She nods again more decisively this time. Daniel takes the lead then. Conversation closed. It's time we move on. We need to focus on chasing down Green Winters. Indeed. I transfer the information uh, that we received from Altuk to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation, Daniel. Now it's yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers. On that machine, I would suggest reviewing her notes when you had the time. Imso turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Good hunting. I will eagerly await your return. I wouldn't suggest diving, uh, driving to Drog and Kippa. The roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster anyway. U-Bahn it is. I could not, uh, then turn, turns to check her equipment. The rest of the group disperses in turn. Now command the team of Shadowrunners when traveling to new mission locations you will be able to choose which members of the team bring and modify their loadout for the run. Alright, when members of your team become permanently uh, incapacitated on a the mission they will be automatically extracted from emergency medical care. Okay, so that's that's just like uh, in the Sega Shadowrun. Uh, so where is this? Is this the terminal? Check the inbox. Uh, Shadow and BBS. Uh, relevant keywords. Who is Killer in Seattle? Anyone else reading about this? City's going to Lone Star contract and they can't catch the guy. This Emerald City Ripper. It's been out on a spree, and so far no one has a clue. Pathetic. If someone uh, had on my black, some vigilantes would have tracked him down and stopped him. Shows how good state payroll cops are. Hmm. 
It's <laughs> pretty cool. Okay. Monica's uh, personnel files. Uh, about me. The image of Monica smiles on the screen. Daniel, my secret weapon. I have run enough with Daniel to know that he's trustworthy, good in the fight too. But beyond all that, it's good just to see him again. There aren't many people left from the old days, far too few. And Daniel, she smiles well. He was always the best of them. She takes a deep breath and shakes her head with a sigh. God, that was sappy. Mental note, re-record this before Daniel gets a chance to see it. At any rate, if anything happens to me, it's good to know that he'll be on, on hand to fill my shoes. It's not what Geiger would want, but it's what would be best for the team. What about Glory? Uh-huh. Uh, Glory, our damaged enigma. I've known her for almost five years now, but I don't think I'll ever really know her. Somehow, I doubt that anyone will. On an operation level, uh, Glory's solid. That chrome of hers may be old, but it gets the job done. I've seen her take a troll apart with her hand razors, and when her adrenal adrenal pump is running, she moves faster than anyone I've ever seen. On top of all that, Glory's a competent field medic. I don't know where she learned medicine, yet another question mark, uh, but she's patched me up at least a dozen times. Between her skill with a med kit and Dietrich's uh, magic, we haven't had much trouble with serious injuries, and in our line of work, that's a luxury. Monica pauses for a moment and then shrugs. That's really all that I know about Glory. She keeps to herself, barely talks, and spends most of her time staring at nothing. I've seen this kind of behavior before, of course. Something bad happened in the past. Deep down, I think she's still running from it, and I'm sure that her cyberware ties into it somehow. I don't know, maybe someday she'll open up to me. I'd like to think that she will. We'll see, I suppose. Okay. That's, well, we can read that later. I want to get on with this mission because last episode I just kind of like fucking talked. You know what I mean? So, uh, how many people can I take on a mission? Uh, I definitely want Dietrich. I guess I'll just fucking go out. I guess you can only take two with you. Which is kind of shit, you know, I guess. Well, can't you take everyone? go right or do I gotta like where's my uh flush the data taps take the u-bond and okay I I uh, uh... <laughs> I wasn't reading. <laughs> uh huh, yeah. Um, jobs. All pending active jobs. Jobs. Okay. okay. Okay, so I guess I just walk out and get on the way there, I guess. Okay, uh, I can't save the game right now. It's kind of uh, weird. Hey, whatever. All right. To the U-Bahn. Not save the game. Yeah, I can. Okay, you know, I'll tell you what. That that all that reading and text shit kind of really took it out of uh, me. Uh, plus, my my fucking got like a uh, some pain in my mouth right now, which is really weird. I, I think I ate something hard and kind of like must have like kind of you know hurt my mouth a little bit uh, yesterday. And it 
just kind of making my mouth sore. I don't really want to talk. Uh, so I'm just going to end the episode here, and the next time, uh, we're going to go on this mission. So until then, thanks for watching.